And we are live. This is the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps post game show. As always, my name is Sheldon Alexander. In this episode of Wrap It Up, it's brought to you by Clean Cuts Barbershop, 2013 Danforth Avenue in the east end of Toronto. Always keep you fresh for any and all occasions. So go see Skip and the crew. As the wise man once said, tell them that I sent you. Check them out on Instagram at Clean Cuts Toronto or give them a call 416 917 4833 to book your appointment now. Huge shout to Raptors fans. Thank you for tuning in to this, the Wrap It Up podcast on a Sunday night. It was a busy sports day in Toronto. I know, tough loss for the Leafs, big win for the Raps. Also, we got Game of Thrones going on tonight. So I know there's a lot going on, but shouts to the people tuning in live on Twitter at Shell Alexander, as you always do for each and every Raptors post game show following every Raptors game. And also, shouts to the people tuning in on Instagram as well, taking your questions and comments there. And of course, this becomes a podcast, which, you know, maybe you're watching Game of Thrones right now, so you want to catch up on the podcast later on. That's cool. We got you covered on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, and of course, on YouTube. Like and subscribe. Tell your friends. All that fun stuff, because we got you covered there as well. Shouts to all the people tuning in and liking and sharing as the community continues to grow really appreciate you guys all the likes all the subscribes all the subscriptions we appreciate it all really big and that's how we get opportunities like what happened on friday where we got to do the show live from shark club in downtown toronto shouts to the people down there downtown toronto young and dundas square shark club that was a fun time that we had my myself q and of course mikey that was a great time. You know, we had a, a lot of chance going there. We got to have some great food, test out their happy hour menu. Things were really good there. We had a really good time at Shark Club. Great place to watch the game. And if you guys are fans of this Wrap It Up podcast, enjoyed that, let them know. This There's this thing called social media where you can go on social media and you can let brands know the th- certain things that you like that they're doing. So if you enjoyed that podcast, hit them up on Instagram. It's Shark Club T-O-R on instagram let them know at them go to my page at sheldon alexander like and comment there on the couple posts that we have we'll have more of those posts coming up soon uh throughout the week as we'll filter out some more content from a lot of the fun that we had there but if that's something that you like let the people know and we'll do that more so we'll have live shows we'll we'll have a big event for the community to come out and enjoy the food the fun the happy hour at shark club but Of course, main reason why we're here is to enjoy the Toronto Raptors as they, for the first time ever, how does this sound, Raptors fans? For the first time ever, the Toronto Raptors have won consecutive road games in the same series, and they win 107-85, a convincing win over the Orlando Magic to take a commanding 3-1 series lead for the first time ever in Raptors playoff history. How does that sound, Raptors fans? That is something that we are not used to when watching this team. If you remember going back to last year when the Raps were playing against the the uh, Washington Wizards. I don't know why I drew a blank there. But last year when the Raps were going up against Washington Wizards, they got up to a 2-0 lead. Seemed like everything was cool. And then they went to Washington and gave that back up. So if we know something about following this Toronto Raptors team, we know that it's never easy. But maybe this time, as I've been saying all year, it's just different right? It's just different, Raptors fans. Things are different. And the main reason why, the starting point why I will say things are different is because the Toronto Raptors have this guy in their lineup. And his name is Kawhi Leonard. (laughs) He was sick in game three, battled it out, didn't really have too good of a shooting night, but still gutted out a solid performance, gave the Raptors what he could as the Raptors won game three. But now he's feeling better. You saw the post-game interview after the game. He said he drank a lot of water to get over the sickness that he was on. Stay hydrated, kids. That's the lesson here. But Kawhi Leonard tells you, drank a lot of water, stayed hydrated. Now he's feeling good heading into game four. And he, he showed the Orlando Magic he was feeling good too. Finishes with 34 points on 12 of 20 shooting. Finally was getting to the free throw line. Shot nine free throws. And it could have been a lot more free throws than the nine that he shot. But he was 8 of 9 from the line. Kawhi giving you his normal 2 steals. Also added in 2 blocks. 6 rebounds because that's what Kawhi does. 
two of five from three. Playoff Kawhi is the reason why load management is a thing. And we're seeing it in this game now. We're seeing the Toronto Raptors do what they should be doing against the Orlando Magic in the first round series. As again, they now lead 3-1 as they put, I mean, 107-85. This wasn't even really a close game. Orlando did all they could to keep it close. Shouts to Aaron Gordon, who was the only Orlando Magic consistently, I think, from start to finish. That was putting in work and, you know, hey. Maybe my guy was just getting frustrated because he's getting tired of Kawhi giving him the business because <laughs> that's what was going down in this game. But let me know what you guys think. What, how are you enjoying watching playoff Kawhi? Because he has been putting on a show in three of the four games this series. And the only game that he did not play, he did not play great or playoff Kawhi like, we now know that he was sick. So Raptors came out early. They started off this game... You know, Orlando actually started off well. Orlando came out, got it. And you kind of expect that, right? Because no team wants to fall down 3-1. So they're going to come out with a solid, a solid go. Orlando started 6-6 six of six from the floor. But then the Raptors answered. They took that early punch. And they countered with a 17-4 run of their own. And some great teamwork. Some great passing from Gasol and Kawhi. Remind me to talk about Marc Gasol later on. But. Just great play from the Raptors early. The ball movement was on point. And that's where you're seeing where this Raptors offense is now. It's sharing the ball. Whoever has a hot hand goes with it. Whoever, you know, there's not a lot of over dribbling anymore in this Raptors offense, especially in the starting unit. The ball is moving on a string. Guys are getting easy shots. Kawhi, you're seeing it. When he's on, he's getting to the basket. Or he's at least getting in the paint where he can make that pull-up jumper look so easy. That's kind of where the Raptors got off to their great start. And after Kawhi Leonard, let's be serious. Because when the bench was struggling, I'm the first one to be there and call out the bench. But the bench in this game finally came to play. And that is a big thing, especially as you, you look towards the second round. Because, I mean, you're up 3-1 now, right? You got to start thinking you need to have your bench at least, at least maintained. And they weren't even doing that, right? They came into this game, the bench play for the Toronto Raptors, at a minus 28 against the Orlando Magic bench. Now, of course, a lot of that is your man's T. Ross. T. Ross was off to, he's having a very, pretty good series. But it doesn't, you know, take away from the fact that the bench was really struggling. And in this game, the bench did a good job of turning things around. Led by Norman Powell. Norman Powell was really good in this game. And... The 16 points are great, but I think the 7 of 9 shooting just shows the efficiency that Norman Powell, for a lot of this season, I will say, Norm looked good for most of the season. Norm played really well, and he was super efficient in this game, and they talked about it during the broadcast, but Norm wasn't forcing. He wasn't trying to do too much. He was taking what the defense gave him. He was under control, driving to the basket. It was getting solid layups, ball fakes, reacting to what the defense was doing and getting easy buckets. Seven of nine shooting from Norm, five of six shooting from uh, Serge Ibaka, Serge off the bench with 13 and eight, just a solid performance from Serge and Norm as well. And you're kind of noticing what Nurse is doing where you're seeing a lot of minutes, the bench is playing with Pascal, for sure, Pascal's on the floor with the bench, but also you're seeing a lot of minutes with Kyle in the bench along with Pascal. And then what if Pascal comes off, then you get Kawhi Leonard and the bench. Also with Kyle for the majority of the minutes, right? And that's kind of what it's going to be going forward. And one of the things that I'll even admit that I wasn't I wasn't bringing up enough throughout the first the first few games of this series, Norman Powell and Fred Van Fleet have kind of struggled in this series and I think it's because of the size and length of the Orlando Magic. Now, we talked about how much that bothered Pascal or bothered Kawhi, even Kyle Lowry. Early on in the season, a bit during game one, but we didn't really talk about the fact that how that size, how the length has affected. If you're really being serious, Norman Powell and Fred Van Fleet are pretty much undersized guards in the NBA. And when you have a team that's long, like the Orlando Magic, and their guards coming off the bench, Michael Carter-Williams, even T. Ross is a taller guard, but those are guys that are long and athletic, and they 
they make offense a little more difficult for guys like Norm, for guys like Fred Van Fleet, who are undersized but used to getting their shot off whenever they want. But a great job in this game adjusting and finally giving you what the Raptors need from their bench, especially as you look forward to matchups going on down the line in the playoffs. Solid performance from Norm. Again, 16 points on 7 of 9 shooting, add in 4 rebounds, and then your man Serge Ibaka with 16 points and 4 rebounds as well for Serge. Solid performance there. Fred Van Fleet chipped in with 9 points as well. And one thing I want to bring up, and we kind of talked about it on the last podcast with Mikey and with uh, Q as well, but my thing with the bench, and it's so funny, I had to catch myself because I was wondering why I was thinking the bench was looking, it was looking so off. And to me, the main reason for that was because things just look so different from the bench to the starters. Because of the way the starters move the ball, the over-dribbling sometimes that you'll see from Fred Van Fleet or Norman Powell, it sticks out so much more in comparison to what the starters do, where the ball is just on a string. Guys aren't dribbling too much. And then when, when Fred checks in, He's used to dribbling and feeling out the game. You know, maybe he'll turn down a screen, dribble, dribble some more, then get the screen, but the ball hasn't moved at all. You don't really see that with the Raptors' first unit, and that's where things kind of looked off for the Raptors' bench so far. But either way, good signs there for the Toronto Raptors as their bench finally showed up and put in a solid performance. If you're the Toronto Raptors, that's what you want to see from your bench. You want to see production that you don't have to be playing Siakam or Kawhi 40 plus minutes. You will if you have to, but as long as the bench can maintain, that's a good sign. And if your bench wasn't struggling to maintain against Orlando, you might have some questions going forward on what they might do against the Sixers, right? But anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys. Let's get to some comments here. We got some comments on Twitter. Fresh LA says, third quarter, Kawhi, all I'm going to say. Kawhi Leonard was good from front to back, but Kawhi Leonard in the third quarter put in 12 points. And I know I've been saying this so often, but it's however do you want it, however do you need it from Kawhi. <laughs> he's just giving Orlando the business, whether it's drives to the basket, he's getting dunks at, at the rim, he's hitting three-point shots, he's nicing them on the wing. Whatever you want from Kawhi, he's giving it to you, as well as the defensive end. He had a huge block in that third quarter as well that looked like, you know, it wasn't the chase down LeBron block because, like, he wasn't coming from that far, but it looked like the Orlando player had the layup, and then out of nowhere, Kawhi comes with a huge swat. And when your star player is doing it like that on both ends of the floor, you have no choice if you're a bench player to not be doing the same. Kawhi Leonard leading from example. And I mean, hey, I'm talking about the bench players, but if you're Pascal Siakam, the second best player on the team, you have no choice but to go out on both ends of the floor if you're watching what Kawhi does as well. And the Raptors, I mentioned their defense in this game. Their defense was just putting in work. They finished with 11 steals in this game. Kyle Lowry had four steals. Marc Gasol had two steals. Danny Green with two steals. Kawhi with two steals. When four of your five starters have more than has two or more steals in a game, that's tough to beat. Toronto Raptors have been doing such a good job. They just look so good defensively, and that's what's going to be key going forward against the Sixers, the defense. And this is where I'll get to Marc Gasol because it's another reminder. You're going to look at the stat line. You're going to say Gasol was one for three for two points, okay? That's what you're going to have some people point at and be like, what is Marc Gasol doing? But I'm going to stress this to you because Vucevic, again, is an all-star performer in this, in this NBA. He was an all-star. He was a legit high double double guy 20 and 10 guy there's not that many 20 and 10 dudes in the league anymore in this era of the nba and marcus Saul's the job that he's done defensively on vucevic it's been lights out this was probably his what his second best game and he only had 11 and 5 11 points on 5 of 14 shooting and if you're watching this game, and I know I don't want to get too deep, deep dive into basketball because then people people knock me and saying that I'm just looking at things to big up Marc Gasol, right? To like stay in my corner of being the Marc Gasol defender 
and I don't want to be that guy, but I'm being dead serious. What he's doing defensively to Vucevic is incredible. And you can only hope that some of that translates and goes forward into the next series when and if the matchup is Joel Embiid. Because we know Joel Embiid is hobbled, but we also know that Joel Embiid is the main part for the Philadelphia 76ers. And if Gasol can do all he can to slow Embiid, to make him work a little harder, that's a win for the Raps. I might also say that in that series, you might want a little more offensively from Gasol to make Joel Embiid have to work on the other end. Tire him out a little, right? That might be the key. But the point remains, a two-headed monster of that the Raptors have from their front line of Serge Ibaka and Marc Gasol, where it's defense and offense. And again, I keep stressing this. Gasol can give you the offense. He's just showing you that he doesn't need those touches. And that's the biggest piece of how and why he fits into this team. Yes, he can score, but he's accepting a role, allowing the Siakam glow up to continue, accepting a role that his job is to set screens for Kyle Lowry, for Danny Green, for Kawhi Leonard, to find Pascal cutting to the basket. To have a vet like that, with a high basketball IQ to accept a role on one of the best teams in the NBA, that's massive. Now, if you even dive a little deeper in this game, or just what Gasol's done so far, but the steal numbers are stupid. You're talking four steals, four steals, and two steals. That doesn't even make any sense. How's your center getting that many steals? He's just in passing lanes. The defensive assignments are what they are in terms of they know when they're going to trap, when they're going to, you know, he's just going to hedge and allow the defender to come back. But it's just been an amazing job by Marc Gasol. And as Diversified Youth points out on Twitter, Danny, Gar Danny Green can guard Thanos with ease. As Diaz says, how about Danny Green guarding DJ Augustine? It's so true. The job that the Raptors have done defensively to flip this series around, and I'm talking about Danny Green on DJ Augustine after his epic game one, another struggle tonight from DJ Augustine, as he basically, since that first game where he had 25 points, DJ Augustine has been pretty, well, I'll say DJ Augustine-like since that game one. In this game, DJ Augustine had eight points in this game on three of six shooting. Far quiet. Far cry from the 25 points he put up in game one. But that's just the defensive adjustments the Raptors have made to shut down Vucevic and to shut down DJ Augustine. Now, T. Ross can, didn't have a good game tonight. He hit another buzzer beater, which, like, I don't know. Do the Raps got to figure something out to just not allow T. Ross to get the ball at the end of a quarter? But they did the job on T. Ross tonight. He didn't really have too good of a game. Fournier got to 19 points, but that was on 8 of 16 shooting. I know that's 50%. I know that. But your perimeter player and taking 16 shots to get 19 points is just okay. It's just okay. It's not great. I mean, it's great in comparison to what Fournier's done for the majority of the series, but it's just okay. Let me get to some more comments here because a lot of people were in on the Instagram feed early while I was setting up, while a light fell down in the background, actually. So shout out to the people on Instagram for sticking through all this. Let me get to some comments right now. Uh, Will Joseph says, game one looks like a fluke now. Yeah, all those Twitter, Twitter trolls, there are a lot of them too that came out early after game one talking about, oh, same old Raptors, all that stuff. I feel like they're a lot more quiet now, right? Like, they're they're nowhere to be found. It's just a thing, right? I mean, I don't know what if people thought that the Magic were going to win this series just because they won game one, but the Twitter trolls were out for sure. And now they seem a lot more quiet. But, hey, what, more, what can you do? Uh, Glow Girl Smile says, Great team effort. Defense is the key to their offense. Had they keyed in on game one, they should have swept the Magic. I mean, that's one thing to think about. The series could be over tonight if the Raptors didn't slip in game one. Hey, series could be over. You could be talking about getting some rest for Kawhi, for Marc Gasol, for Pascal, who's been playing crazy minutes so far in this series. But, hey, you got to play the cards that were dealt, and the Raptors were dealt with the first game loss in the playoffs. So, hey, what can you do, right? 
You just got to go out, win game five on Tuesday night, end the series, hopefully the Leafs win two, and the whole six will be a wave on Tuesday. But we'll, we will see for sure. Uh, my man Beal says, good win. Uh, another comment, Abaka from three, me yelling, no, 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 yes, good shot. Uh, shouts to Serge. Serge has been playing really well. And Nick Nurse has been talking a lot, giving Serge a lot of praise for accepting his role on this team, right? Even from the beginning of the season when he was doing a lot of work coming off the bench because JV was still here. And then they were kind of going back and forth. And then JV got hurt. Serge stepped into the starting role and he played big minutes and put in big time work for the Toronto Raptors for the majority of the season once JV went down. And then JV gets traded, in comes Gasol, Serge goes back to the bench. That's a tough season for Serge Ibaka to, to have his minutes go back and forth like that when you know that you could start on a lot of teams in the NBA. But again, accepting that role with this team Got to give Serge a lot of credit for what he's done so far. Uh, let's see what else is going on here on Instagram. Trying to get to a lot more comments here. Uh, another comment says, Kawhi handling dudes, fighting through contact, and staying hydrated. <laughs> Solid work for Kawhi Leonard in this game. Uh, more comments. Just talking about the foul calls going back and forth especially as the Raptors so far in the playoffs average the least amount of free throws attempts, free throw attempts per game in the playoffs. Meanwhile, their matchup in the second round could be the Sixers who average the most free throw attempts in the playoffs. A lot of that is Joel Embiid as well, which is something to keep in mind when you're talking about Marcus Gasol foul trouble or surge foul trouble. It will be very key, the two of those guys against Joel Embiid. So solid effort there from Toronto Raptors and we will be interested to see how that matchup goes going forward. Uh, Fly Miss says, I know it's because everything, everyone knows the Raptors are winning the series. Uh, people are just hype. Uh, let's see. The Magic literally have no answer for Kawhi. So satisfying to see him literally demoralize them. It's so true. And I'm going to ask people this. And believe me when I say I'm just asking this question, okay? But if you watch the Spurs game and you watch DeMar get ejected, after taking that charge call and he threw the ball at the official. What did you feel when you saw that as a Raptor fan? Like, I'm, I'm just curious because we're getting to see Kawhi, playoff Kawhi do work, but seeing DeMar just frustrated like that, right? And watching the Raptors team and what's going on now, I'm interested to know what Raptors fans are feeling watching that. I was kind of like, wow, like it's, it's refreshing, right? I mean, you look at Kyle Lowry. Since Kyle Lowry's game one, he had a monster game two. But since then, he's been all right. He's doing what Kyle Lowry, what you need Kyle Lowry to do. He had nine points in this game. I'm, I mean, I haven't changed my tune since game one. I said, if Kyle Lowry's getting you 10 points a game, cool. You take that. You know you're going to get the assists. You know you're going to get the steals. You need him to knock down the open three here and there. And that's what you're seeing from Kyle Lowry. But... When you talk about how frustrating it became watching your two best players of Kyle Lowry and DeMar DeRozan struggle in the playoffs, it is very refreshing now to watch Kawhi Leonard do what he does at a very high level. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, someone says, what up, Sheldon and Raps Nation? Shout out to you. Another comment says, Raps, Raptors win, Raptors win, Raptors win. Yes, totally true as well. Let me keep scrolling down because I really appreciate you guys tuning in and sending in your comments each and every episode of the Wrap It Up podcast because, hey, this team is different as someone on Twitter, I think that says Styles says, this Raps team is different. I like the bench lineup Nurse put out there. Abaka, Siakam, Fred Van Fleet, Danny, and Meeks. I mean, just quick minutes, right? Jody Meeks is just there to give someone an extra two minute break before the end of the first quarter, right? That's all you need Jody Meeks for. He's doing that job. Not much else you need from that. But as we talked about at the end of the year, when everyone's getting so mad at what, uh, what's my guy's name? Jeremy Lin was doing and kept stressing here. Don't worry about Jeremy Lin. He's not going to play in the playoffs. He's not going to be a factor in the playoffs because he's not going to get minutes. And you're seeing it. You really, really need to just get some form of consistency from Norm, from Fred, 
and from Serge Ibaka. I feel like you know you're good, what you're going to get from Serge. Serge is going to give you that effort, and it's just good to keep that going. We want to keep that going where the bench is able to contribute and let your guys get a bit of a break. More comments, though. Cat Libby on Instagram says, Hi, Sheldon. Thanks for creating a space to chat raps. Thank you, guys. I mean, hey. I'm just on the Instagram feed talking to you guys. So thanks you guys for tuning in and talking with me because I'd look really weird if I was just talking to myself, right? I guess I could do it, <laughs> but it'd be kind of weird. So without you guys, thank you. Cause I don't know if I'd be able to do it without you guys for sure. Greatly appreciate that. Uh, let's see what else is going on here on Instagram. Someone says when we play like we did, nobody can beat us. The defense was amazing. Uh, Diaz says Raptors first three straight wins in postseason franchise history. It's crazy. Uh, Diaz also calling me Sheldon quote. I'm a fun guy. Close quote. Alexander. What? I, am I not a fun guy? <laughs> I don't know. Is that supposed to be shots at me? What's going on? Diaz thought we were boys. What's going on? Uh, DVAD 59 points out a very interesting thing here for all those people trying to read into what Kawhi is doing. Is Kawhi going to stay? Is Kawhi going to go? DVAD 59 points out again, Kawhi said the medical staff did a great job. <laughs> hey, just saying. At this point, Raptors fans, as we count down the possible final games that Kawhi Leonard could be wearing in a Raptors uniform, we're going to grasp at all these straws right now. Anything that might lead us to thinking, hey, Kawhi's going to stay. Uh, happy tonight with Nick Nurse calling timeouts at the perfect time. That's very true. Nick Nurse doing a great job stopping any form of momentum. If Orlando got a little bit excited, Nurse was very quick to call timeout. Great job by Nick Nurse there. Um, Alex says, I feel bad for T. Ross. Man's looked heartbroken on the bench on the TNT feed. It's tough for T. Ross. I mean, he's finally putting in a solid effort. He's found a niche on it on the team. He struggled in this game, but he's been playing well, and it's got to be kind of tough going up against your former team like this, no? And so to have, you know, your best run. And then you have this opportunity to go against a team that in your mind gave up on you, right? They traded you for Serge Ibaka. So this is, you're having, you're at the peak right now of your career, but now you're kind of stalling against a team that gave gave up on you, so to say, so to speak. It's got to be tough for T-Ross. But I will say, there is part of me that is happy to see T-Ross having a solid series. Because, I mean, it's not going to matter anyways, because Raps are going to win, right? <laughs> Uh, Austin says, crazy how three starters have under 10 points and they still win by over 20. As a, again, this team's just different. I said, Kyle Lowry only needs to get you 10 points. That's it. The rest of the team, the way that the rest of the team is built, if Kyle Lowry gets you 10 points and he's still getting his assists, doing other things on defense, cool. The way that the offense moves, you got something from Danny Green, give you eight points in this game, but he hit two threes. Cool. Much more important that he was playing solid defense and you're getting scoring from other places. Kawhi can get you buckets. Siakam can get you buckets. The other guys know what their role is. This is a far cry from the team that needed DeMar to get 30 plus, needed Kyle Lowry to get 20 plus, and then needed Fred Van Fleet to get you like 15. Think about that. How different is the Toronto Ra are the Toronto Raptors now from the past playoff teams? Again, it's just different. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. Orlando doesn't have the team to go up against the Raptors in the series. Totally agree. It's tough, right, for Orlando. Orlando, they put up a good fight. They had a great end to the season. They finished over 500. They got into the playoffs in a year when maybe they did weren't expecting to make it into the playoffs. But it was a good first year for Steve Clifford. And I know I'm kind of talking and speaking as if the series is already over, which is somewhat unfair. But at the same time, you're seeing Orlando's overmatched at this point. Uh, Diaz again says, medical staff gives Kawhi some Buckleys. Raptors fans, Kawhi stays in Toronto confirmed. <laughs> hey, what's a Chris Rock bit? Throw some Robitussin in it. <laughs> Robitussin cures everything. 
Oh man, too foul, too funny, too funny for sure. Solid performance here from the Toronto Raptors as they win again, 107-85. Thanks to everybody for tuning in. Raptors win another solid game from Kawhi Leonard, who puts in work with 34 points on 12 of 20 shooting in this game. Kawhi was just an absolute beast. The Orlando Magic don't have an answer for Kawhi. Kawhi continues to just be as advertised when he's healthy, right? When he's healthy, when he's not sick, Kawhi was as advertised as he put in work yet again for the Toronto Raptors as they come up with a huge win to get their first ever 3-1 lead in a series in franchise history. The Toronto Raptors have also won back-to-back games for the first time on the road consecutive games on the road for the first time in franchise history solid job by by the toronto raptors in this game nick nurse making great adjustments nick nurse i mean nick nurse's best move tonight might be the meme that he created from i don't even know how to put it but that expression that uh nick nurse had where he his jaws just dropped and his mouth's wide open yeah interesting look from nick nurse there but Definitely meme worthy, right? Solid performance by Nick Nurse and the Toronto Raptors in this game. Big time performance. Let's just see if we can find um, find any post game comments or clips from the Toronto Raptors as they did a great job in this game, but a pretty standard win. And I think when you have victories like this, it's a good sign, right? Because you're taking care of business. This is a team that the Toronto Raptors fan base has been waiting to see the past few years, where as a top team, you take care of business in the first round. You win a series. You put yourself in position to win a series in five games. You don't let it go to six or seven because you know that you're the better team, right? The Raptors are not only winning games, but they're dominating games. And that overall is a very good sign. So again, thank you guys for tuning in to the Wrap It Up podcast. Shout to the people who end up following along after each and every game on Twitter at Shell Alexander. Same thing goes for the people on Instagram who also put in their comments and questions and give us little tidbits like this. Uh, someone says Kawhi and Powell on the podium. Norman Powell, podium game. We're used to seeing that in the playoffs from Norm, right? Norm's familiar. He, he has a familiarity with the podium in the playoffs. Norman Powell does seem to, you know, get his shine on, so to speak. I mean, normally it's in different situations where it seems like Norm is saving the Raptors. Wasn't really doing that, but he did put in some work. Uh, Austin giving us a little bit of stats, saying Rap shoot 53% and 39% from three in this game. If the Raps are doing that, if they're shooting around 40%, they're going to be tough to beat from three, right? If they're if the three-point shot is falling like that and you you're getting three-point shots from... Siakam, Kawhi, Kyle Lowry, and Danny Green, then the three guys off your bench in terms of Norm, Abaka, and Fred Van Fleet. Raps are tough to beat when that happens. But again, huge shout to you guys. Thanks to you guys for tuning in and giving us all these comments. Uh, also, it was great to see Patrick McCaw uh, back in the lineup for the Toronto Raptors. I know he got a little burn in garbage time, but... It'll be interesting going forward because you might need to throw him out there to play a little defense, to run around and chase either J.J. Redick or just get up in Ben Simmons' grill for a couple possessions, right? So great to see Patrick McCaw back in the lineup there for the Toronto Raptors. Um, guys, so many comments. Thank you guys so much for all these comments. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys for... Uh, supporting the content uh, my guy Beals checks in on Instagram he says Serge is playing his role also says Kawhi getting calls tonight two things that if ha that happens for the Raptors they're gonna make a deep run in the playoffs um, I don't really like talking about the refs because I think the refs just suck for everybody but at the same time Kawhi needs to get more calls right they really do need to get more calls uh Someone says, Ayo Sheldon, shout out to you. I just wanted to say before you sign off that I'm watching Game of Thrones, but big up Kawhi. All right, I'm out. <laughs> hey, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you. My PVR is going. I got Game of Thrones lined up to watch at the end of this podcast for sure. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put on the OKC game. I'll watch the end of that, and then I'll watch Game of Thrones late night. And hopefully, nobody dies on Game of Thrones. 
And I only say that because if someone dies, then Twitter's going to go crazy and the chances of it getting ruined for me is going to be a lot higher. So hopefully, hopefully, if shit goes down, I can dip and dodge on Twitter, kind of like Kawhi's been dipping and dodging Magic Defenders on his way to the cup. See what I did there? See what I did there? Yeah. But uh, more comments here. Uh, I asked the question, so I want to get read the answers. Glow Girl Smiles, we are talking about DeMar. I asked earlier, what's it feel to be watching DeMar DeRozan on the Spurs? Glow Girl Smiles says, I feel that DeMar is a good regular season player, but he gets flustered in the playoffs like he can't handle the pressure. Yeah, I mean, it's very true. Very solid point there. It's It doesn't look good for DeMar DeRozan in the playoffs at all. Uh, another comment... Uh, KD and Kawhi are next in line for LeBron's crown. I mean, that's an interesting point. Kawhi's been pretty damn good so far. Uh, my guy Cuffs the Legend did say, just a reminder, Kawhi is top five player on earth, in case y'all forgot. I totally agree with that. Another comment here says, now we know the difference between an all-star and a superstar, and I love DeMar. I think that pretty much sums up the Raptors fan base, right? Like they got love for DeMar because he did put in work for the Toronto Raptors. He was the star that stayed. He was an all-star. He he made them a legitimate franchise. He was one of the cornerstone pieces. He improved each and every season. He surpassed expectations from when he was the ninth overall pick in that draft. He surpassed all expectations. He great. But now when it's winning time, when it's winning time, and we're talking about winning championship time winning eastern conference championship time you got to level up and shout some aside for doing that uh, another comment here about damar because i'm interested to hear what people have to say about that for sure uh i'm glad damar is with pop we traded him to a great organization with arguably the best coach in the league uh totally true uh someone's telling me to drink a lot of water hey no problem, I will. Kawhi says so, I'm going to do it. If it works for Kawhi, it's got to work for me, right? Got to get my water on. Uh, let's see. Uh, poor Dwayne Casey getting swept two seasons in a row. Yeah, things not looking good for the Detroit Pistons. I wonder if they wish that they played the Raptors. Or I guess it wouldn't have mattered, right? Because at the end of the day, Blake Griffin being hurt, they got no choice, right? They got no chance. Uh, but anyways, thanks to you guys for all these comments. Really appreciate it. I always do. And if you want more comments, you want more Raptors conversations, the best place for the conversation right now is if you go to YouTube.com. If you either search Sheldon Alexander or you search On Blast Podcast or you search Wrap It Up Podcast, you will find the link to all these episodes that we've done, not only these playoffs but this season as well if you go to each video the comment section there the conversation really doesn't stop from one game to the next people are there fired up talking about the toronto raptors what they like what they don't like what's going on in the other series it's just a great place for toronto raptors fans if you want to do a deep dive like and subscribe there it's under my name sheldon alexander on youtube and hey Really appreciate it as you guys help me continue to grow this community and turn it into something that the Raptors fan base deserves because the Raptors fans do deserve a place post game to discuss what's going on with this team as they continue on their journey of the best season in Raptors franchise history. So again, thank you so much. My name is Sheldon Alexander and I used to pray for times like this to rob like this. This is the Wrap It Up on Blast Raps post game show. As always, unpolished and unapologetic. Until next time, see ya. Oh, blast.